Norway for the first flight of ESA Aerospace Spectrum rocket. The mission, named Going Full Spectrum, is currently in the final stages before flight. Mission Control has polled Go and the rocket is fully fueled. I'm Adrian Bile, host for this livestream representing NSF, nasaspaceflight.com, and I'm joined by Juliana from ESA Aerospace, who will be sharing insight throughout the broadcast. Good to have you here, Juliana. It's great to be here. And let me, of course, start with the obvious first question. What is ESA Aerospace and what is your mission all about? ESA Aerospace was uh, founded in 2018. We are the first privately, fully privately funded company in Europe to launch an orbital launch vehicle. Um, our mission is to open space for future generations. Why is that important? Just imagine um, life without GPS or fast communications or internet connections, um, live weather forecasts. With better data from satellites, we can predict floods or storms or wildfires better and even save lives and habitats. So w our vision is actually to offer independent, reliable, economic and orbit flexible launch capabilities to a wide range of customers. And we aim to do so by scaling and in industrializing um, the production of launch vehicles. Wonderful. And of course, let me ask you also the question here. What have you done so far at ESAR Aerospace? I have been with the company basically from the beginning. Um, I have been part of, in diff like I have worked on different parts of the development of our Spectrum launch vehicle. But as of late, I have been a mission manager, which means that I have been working closely with our customers as well as internally with our teams um, to ensure that all s systems are aligned, all interfaces work together and our mission can be a success. And let's talk about that mission that is happening today. What is this mission all about and what would be success for ESA Aerospace today? I think success is a very broad word to use, I would say. Um, some people might think that a successful rocket launch only means that we will make it to orbit, but that is not actually the case for us. Being on this mission today, being on the pad right in front of me, uh, in front of, uh, behind <laughs> us, sorry, um, is already a huge success for us. And especially in today's geoclim geopolitical climate, I think this is about much more than just a rocket launch. This is our first test flight um, and uh, we will try to gain as much data and experience from this ter first test flight. This is our last integrated test of our whole launch vehicle as one. And let's talk about that data a bit more. Why is that data so important for ESA Aerospace going forward? We follow an iterative approach at ESA Aerospace, uh, which is also called rapid prototyping, where we um, test early on in our development in order to be faster in improving um, and then iterating the design. So we really, we design a component, we then build it, we then test it. From that test, we gain a lot of data, we analyze it, we learn, we then iterate the design and then improve our designs for the next iteration or the next test. And this is what we're doing here today. So we're really trying to gather as much data as we can. We will try to test every system of this rocket so that we will know for the next iteration of the rocket um, that we can improve it. And actually, our strength is not only building one rocket that you can see uh, behind us, but actually the serial production of rockets. So production, uh, rocket two and three are already in production right now. That is amazing. Let me uh, also talk about, you have been with this company since the beginning. How are you feeling today on such a day? <laughs> it's definitely a broad mixture of feelings. I'm nervous, I'm excited, but most of all, I'm extremely proud. I'm proud to be part of this team, proud to see what we've accomplished over the last seven years. It's really an incredible feeling. Absolutely. And there's so many uh, people at ESA Aerospace who have been working on this and uh, yeah, forming this path to launch. Do you mind giving us a bit more about this path to launch here? Yeah, I mean, the mission is called Going Full Spectrum. We have not only built this launch vehicle, but we have really built the full spectrum behind it. We have built all of the production capabilities, the testing capabilities, as well as the launch site that we can see. Um, going full spectrum for us means giving everything. We have an in hardworking team that is entirely committed to making Spectrum fly. 
Absolutely. Let's talk about Spectrum a bit. Your beautiful rocket here. Do you mind sharing a bit of more insight about Spectrum? Sure. Spectrum is a two-stage orbital launch vehicle, um, which is completely manufactured and designed in-house. We have a payload capability of 1,000 kilograms to low Earth orbits and 700 kilograms to sun-synchronous orbits. Um, what is special about Spectrum, I would say, is the use of propellants, um, which is very unique in this industry. We're actually using liquid oxygen and liquid propane. Um, also, an interesting fact about Spectrum, we are using linerless carbon fiber tanks for our primary structures. And uh, do you have any other things that make Spectrum so unique and uh, so perfectly fitting for the missions you design it for? Yes, also uh, we use a lot of, um, how do you say, um, state-of-the-art uh, materials. So, for example, all of our engines are more, more than 80% of our engines are 3D printed. Um, so we can really um, be super flexible as well, also in the design of our components. Wonderful. Let's talk a bit about where we are here today. Of course, we are sitting in, uh, well, a beautiful landscape here. Let's talk about why did you choose Andoya as a launch site for Spectrum? Um, I don't know if uh, all of our viewers know, but Andoya Spaceport is the Norwegian um, spaceport uh, and the island of Andoya. It is located at 69 degrees north. Um, we are super far high north here, which means that we are perfectly located to reach sun synchronous and polar orbits. Um, and we have the advantage here that we can fly directly over, over uh, open ocean, so we don't have any civilian overflight. And we've chosen also this launch site because our partner here on the island, Andoya Space, they have had experience already with um, launching suborbital rockets. Absolutely. Let's uh, talk quickly about the testing that Spectrum so far has conducted here. What were the testing steps that got Spectrum on the path here? As I mentioned earlier, um, we are following the rapid prototyping approach, so we really have basically tested each and every component on the rocket already. Um, we start by testing one component by itself, and then once we have understood it, once we've iterated, once we have perfected the component, we basically integrated all the components together. So we started out with super early um, propulsion testing, um, and then integrated it stage after stage into the fully integrated engine hot fire testing, for example, that we did in 2023, um, and just uh, a few weeks ago, actually, we have concluded our final test before we were able to do this first test flight, which was a fully uh, integrated nine-engine hot fire of our first stage. Wonderful. We have, of course, seen here uh, the engines venting a bit. Do you mind talking us through the final steps here? What will Spectrum do in the final few minutes here before flight? Um, we have started already cooling down the engines. We call that conditioning. So we try because um, we use liquid oxygen and liquid propane, which are cryogenic fluids. Um, so we will reduce the temperature of the engines um, so that there will not be any temperature gradient once the um, fluids run through it. Um, this process al has already started and then we will start the auto sequence soon from which point onwards basically all systems are go and um, we are hopefully seeing our spectrum vehicle lift off behind us. Quickly we'll ask another uh, question about the auto sequence. Can you quickly describe to me what is exactly an auto sequence? Auto sequence means that from this point onwards, we don't necessarily have uh, control. Of course, we can still abort, but we don't really um, interfere with what is happening at the launch vehicle. So the launch vehicle will give us um, live updates on what is happening and basically will fulfill its, its first flight. With just five minutes and 30 seconds to go here, I want to give you here a final opportunity for a last statement before I let you go step outside and watch Spectrum fly. I want to direct these words directly to our spectrum on the pad. We are all here rooting for you. Good luck, good luck. Um, we really just want to see you fly. And with that, I want to, again, give you the chance to step outside and see spectrum fly. Thanks for being with me here on the broadcast today. We might hear from you later. Thank you, Adrian. And with that, we will also start to reduce commentary here a bit and let you also listen in a bit and do the amazing pad sounds before spectrum will fly in potentially five minutes from now.
Yeah, under two minutes here and Spectrum is being conditioned for flight. Just two minutes to go here on the T-minus clock before Spectrum might launch for the first time. Sixty seconds to go here. Spectrum is still counting down to its maiden flight in under a minute from now. Minus 15 seconds. And we have engine ignition. And we have lift off of Spectrum. The vehicle has cleared the tower and is now starting the pitch over maneuver. Let's all remember what we are here for today and what today's outcome was. The first ever test flight of Spectrum, a launch vehicle, ESA Aerospace, has been designed, developed and built almost entirely in-house in less than seven years. Today was the first integrated test of all systems. Many hundred thousand of components were working together for the first time. And this is also how we should approach the outcome. A test that resulted in tons of data that the teams can now evaluate and learn from. We will now end this broadcast from Andoya, Norway. On ESA Aerospace official news channels, on their website and on X, you will soon be able to read about the results of today's test. Thank you for watching.